Hey, Iostux here. I'd like to share something with you that I believe has been an issue for a lot of players, even if they don't immediately notice it, and how to actively fix the issue. Before we get into this, I'd like to quickly mention this video's sponsor, iostex.com. If you want to get coached by the number one private Overwatch coach, head over to iostex.com and get coached today. Whether you want a live coaching session, a pre-recorded VOD review of your gameplay, or a written assessment of you as a player, there's something for everyone on iostex.com. And no other coaching service comes even close to the consistent results that my coaching brings. Whether you want to reach a higher rating to increase the quality of your matches, or dream of going pro one day, getting a session with me will give you the edge you need. Visit iostex.com and use discount code NEWCLIENT to receive 20% off your first order. That's discount code NEWCLIENT to receive 20% off your first order. Crosshair placement is a skill that's key in any first-person shooter allowing headshots. So before we go into the reasons your crosshair placement is poor, let's first talk about the reasons crosshair placement is so important in the first place. After all, you should understand why all this trouble is worth it in the end. The first advantage is that good crosshair placement is key to improve your situational awareness. Knowing where you are relative to your teammates is important to ensure that you are within your healer's sightlines and that you aren't vulnerable to flankers or otherwise split and isolated. And while sound can help with that, actually seeing where you are is even more important. But if you spend most of your time staring at the ground, you'll have a tough time keeping track of where you are, seeing that half your screen is covered with ground. And it gets even worse in a very vertical shooter like Overwatch. Genji, Farah, Doomfist or Echo are all characters that can screw you over if you aren't keeping your chin up to keep an eye on them. Good crosshair placement allows you to spot characters like that early, either to avoid getting killed by them, or more importantly, to recognize when they are in a position that you can punish. Next, let's talk about how proper crosshair placement helps you improve your headshot accuracy, and why the impact of this is even higher than you might initially anticipate. It's easy to fall into the mental fallacy of deals more DPS, but headshots aren't about how much damage you are dealing per second throughout the game. It's about how much damage per second you are dealing in a given moment. A common argument against headshots is that for most players, the reduction in accuracy is not worth the increase in damage per shot, saying that 50% accuracy with body shots is better than 15% accuracy with headshots. But that's a simplistic way of looking at things. As always, reality is more complicated than that. Overwatch is all about healing, with characters like Brigitte, Lucio, or Baptiste. Most healing isn't even intentional anymore, which means that dealing damage isn't what's important. Dealing damage faster than the enemy team can heal it is what's important. Therefore, a gold damage medal is not a good indicator of performance. It tells you how much damage you've dealt throughout the game, but not whether that damage was sustained or burst. Burst damage is so strong because it allows you to secure kills before the enemy team has a chance to heal up the target. Spamming body shots as Widowmaker will get you a gold damage medal, but one headshot is worth more than ton, uh, 10 body shots if that one headshot leads to a kill. It's better to miss a shot that would have killed someone than to hit a shot that won't kill anyone. And lastly, crosshair placement is an excellent transitional skill across all shoot. While Overwatch might be fun for you right now, who knows what the future holds. Maybe a new game comes out that you fall in love. Maybe your friends switch to a different shooter. Or maybe you like playing multiple games in parallel rather than fully devoting yourself to a single game. Working on your ability usage, your macro level decision making is great if you want to reach a high level in Overwatch. But the moment you switch to a different game, you must start from scratch. Whereas a fundamental skill like crosshair placement allows you to take that skill with you throughout your gaming career. Now that we know why crosshair placement is important, we want to fix it right? Not so fast. Before we can fix a problem, we need to understand why the problem exists in the first place. So why do so many players, especially novices, struggle with crosshair placement? Why are their crosshairs glued to the ground, even if they know that it's not the right way to play the game? First, we need to understand how your screen is populated in most first-person shooters. Traditionally, the top half of the screen is not that cluttered. Objective timers, a kill feed, maybe a map depending on the game. Outside of that, if we focus solely on the top half of the screen, our vision is clear allowing us to comfortably navigate the map. But let's look at the bottom half of the screen. Suddenly it turns into a shit show, and our view on the map is severely limited. Character icons, health, ammunition, ability cooldowns, and most important of all, a giant so-called view model, basically the 3D model of your character's arms and weapon. If we limit our view to the bottom half of the screen, navigating the map becomes incredibly awkward. So if you think about it, it's no wonder that we default to looking at the top half of the screen all the time. It's much less cluttered. Next. 
we need to understand the consequences of our view being centered in the top half of our screen. It means that our view, as in where we are actively looking with our eyes, will always be disjointed from a crosshair. This is a problem because it can give us the wrong idea as to where our shots will actually connect. As you begin to understand the importance of headshots, you will start to actively seek out the enemy's heads with your eyes. I mean, it makes sense, right? If, if we want to hit the head, we must look at the head. But that's where the issue come in, uh, comes in. Issue number one ties directly to the previous point. Our default view is disjointed from the crosshair. It's shifted upwards. This means that if we try to look at the enemy's head, the enemy's head will be in the top half of our screen above our crosshair. So we are looking at the enemy's head, but our crosshair is actually on the enemy's body. And the only way to adjust for this would be to look even higher above the enemy's head. But that's incredibly unintuitive since we'd be looking at the air above the enemy, making it even more difficult to track them visually. Which brings us to issue number two. Tracking the enemy's head is cumbersome visually. The head is a very small target, which means that we are forcing our eyes to look at something that's only a few pixels across in diameter. If the head is moving too quick, or our mouse movements aren't snappy enough, we'll have a tough time keeping track of the head's exact location. And if we don't have the head's exact location, it's impossible to land exact shots. Even if you flick exactly to where your eyes are looking, you might still miss the shot because your eyes couldn't track the enemy head perfect. In order to fix our crosshair placement, we need to fix the two issues we just talked about. We need to find something that's easier to track visually to aim for, and we need to adjust our default focus point on the screen to make sure that our crosshair lands where we want it. And there is a surprisingly elegant solution to both issues simultaneously. But first, let's look at our gameplay to recognize the issue. After all, if your crosshair placement is already good, Good. there's no point in fixing anything. Look at your gameplay through a replay code and be honest with yourself about where you are looking. Or go to a custom map and walk around. You'll immediately immediately notice that your eyes gravitate towards the top portion of the screen. Try to lock your eyes on the crosshair and move around the practice range. It will feel super uncomfortable and that's a clear-cut sign that you aren't looking where you need to look in-game and that your crosshair placement is suffering because of it. The first step to fixing poor crosshair placement is to force our vision below the crosshair. This way, where we are looking, will always be below the crosshair. This will automatically shift our aim upwards. It will be uncomfortable at first, because you won't be used to look at the part of the screen that's cluttered, but if you force yourself to do it, your brain will blend out all the clutter over time, and you won't even notice it. You'll simply look straight through it. But won't this cause the exact opposite? issue, I hear you say. Won't I shoot too high now, since my crosshair is above where I'm looking? Yes, you will. But this is where the second part of this fix comes in, that ties all this together beautifully. To recap, one of the issues we had was that we had to visually track the enemy's head with our head with our eyes in order to shoot at it, which was super difficult. The head is such a small target that tracking it visually is a, tr uh, is a struggle. But now that we focus our vision below the crosshair, we can adjust our visual focus of the target to his entire hitbox instead of just the head. Instead of trying to keep track of the enemy's head with your eyes, you keep track of their body as a whole, looking straight at the center. Because the entire enemy hitbox is much larger than just his head, keeping track of it visually is much simpler, which gives our brain more accurate information to work with. Previously, this wasn't possible. If we try to track the enemy's body instead of the head, then we'd shoot even lower. But now it solves the problem that our previous step created. Because our vision rests below the crosshair, our crosshair will be above where we are looking. So, if we track the enemy's center, our crosser will be, you guessed it, on the head. And that's exactly what pro players do. They don't look at their crosshair, they don't look above their crosshair, they look slightly below their crosshair. Just far enough so that if they visually track the enemy center instead of their head, their crosshair will automatically be at head. Implementing these changes is going to feel uncomfortable at first. And developing good crosshair placement takes time, but you will eventually reach a point where all of this becomes second nature to you. Where you can look at your old gameplay and think, Jesus Christ, Christ, how could I play like this? You'll go from missing headshots you were aiming for to landing headshots you weren't aiming for. And that's the improving, that's the secret to improving your headshot accuracy, your burst damage, and as such, your pick potential and overall effectiveness in any FPS game that has a headshot mechanic. My name is Aerostax, and I'd like to thank you for learning.